Right, we're back on the Audi. There's been a video fail. Not the normal fail though. I did remember the video, I just didn't have a camera to record it because I left it in Chris's Land Rover. So I've got the Audi stripped down because um, new turbo turned up today. So just in the process of mounting it. So I'm a GT, well, GTB 2060 VK. So it's a third gen 60mm VNT, which is a pretty chronic turbo. Um, so I'm in the process of mounting that at the moment. Um, well, there's a bit of a radio going on, but I didn't have the camera when I'd done it, but basically made up adapter plates for it to bolt to the car. And I'm just in the process of making an adapter to attach the exhaust. Um, I've also had the fuel pump off this morning to change the levers and everything, because we've been having serious issues with um, idle control, so I'm trying some different levers in the pump now. But that's been off and back on again, so that should be in time now. Um, there just could be some issues with injector line clearance due to new turbo but hopefully they'll bend out the way. Right, we've got the oil line on and attached. There, slightly manipulated. Down there. Under, well, under, under the fuel pump. Next job, attach this exhaust up and then we might look into a bit of boost. Darren's uh, fighting with the injector lines. The exhaust is on, attached. We haven't got very much clearance for lines. <laughs> Not very much clearance for lines, apparently. <laughs> I can barely get my hand here. I've got to get six injector lines out of here. You mean <laughs> saying that the turbo's are too big, are you? That should be right. <laughs> right, I've got it back together and now we're up and running. Uh, got the new pump, seems to be working a lot better. Um, so, and the turbo's sort of got oil and it's spooling up. So before I go putting too much more together, I think I'm gonna drop some uh, bigger injectors in it. I've got a set of nozzles here, roughly the right angle. Um, so I'm gonna whip the injectors out now and see if I can um, pressurize, or brake pressure and test up some, some injectors here. Okay, so I got it up and running yesterday night um, on the standard injectors with the turbo. Um, so I've just pulled all the injectors out now. Obviously on three on each side. Um, so they're just your typical mechanical style um, DI injectors, that's obviously only three of them. Um, so they come out the head, obviously you've got to take the rocker covers off to get at them. Cause... Okay, so all the injectors are back in now, put the rocking covers back on, bled it up again, got the intake on. Um, so it's just a case of mounting up some actuators on the VNT there now. Uh, sorting out a boost hose from there down to the intercorders and uh, putting it back together, but I can't put it together till I've got a new rad hose for the bottom here. Right, um, just a quick update. The front end is back on, although the rad's been taken out again because we finally found where the water leak is. Um, the radiator is splitting apart. Um, and the core is, if you see, it's bulging off the sides. It's like unclipping itself. Um, I've tried turning it down as a temporary fix, but I'd say there's corrosion building up in the core which is causing it to bulge apart and it's leaking like a sieve. So now we need a new rad, which is typical because we're almost ready to run. So we might actually have to lash that in chemical metal just so we can fire up. I'm just doing a little bit of wiring here. Um, this standard, oh my God, what's going on with the camera? This little oil manifold here, which has got an oil pressure and an oil temperature sensor in it. It used to be located over here um, and all the wiring is on the loom here and doesn't reach. So I've just extended all the wires across, I just haven't taped it up yet, I won't leave it bare, just so we still got those fairly important warnings inside. Um, move the fuel filter down there. Yeah, the boost hoses aren't pretty, but it'll just do the job. Like I say, this is really a budget, apart from the turbo, which is quite expensive, it really is just sort of do everything as cheap as possible. Like the pump is just made up with loads of second-hand pieces. The injectors are used second-hand pieces. The nozzles are new, but it's all second-hand pieces to make them up. Um, and the rest of it's all just bits and pieces, really. The turbo is the only real major expense, because um, 2060 VKs are worth quite a bit of money, but then even if the whole project goes kabang, it's still going to be worth a lot of money, so it's no big loss, really, as long as we don't kill the blower. Right, this is the Tempe Repair Chemical Metal. Um, we do not recommend this, but I just want to get this in the whole water for a minute so I can test it out. And um, we'll get a new rad ordered, which seems to be quite hard to find. <laughs> Anything to do with V6 TDIs on these age um, Audi seems to be parts for. So I'll let that go off a minute and then I'll get the rad back in. Right, we're up and running. We got for a test drive. We've bodged the radiator with some chemical metal. Filled it up with water. Right, quick little update on the Audi here. Um, just got it apart again because 
got problems with the injectors. Well, I say problems. We've got issues with it running out of balance, um, which I kind of predicted really, because we've changed the nozzles out um, in the injectors for some much bigger ones. Because with DI engines like this, the nozzles themselves pretty much immediately become restrictive. So I put some much, much bigger nozzles in. Um, but the way these injectors work, unlike, well, it's very similar to indirect, like XUD things where you've got a spring which sets your brake pressure. But the trouble is, um, well, not all DI injectors, but any modern things, like certainly anything that's VP40 forward anyway, is stock. Um, they've got what's called a dual stage um, injector. So you've basically got two separate um, injection events like a pilot injection and a main injection which is the idea is to keep the um, in the uh, diesel knock noise down make the engine run quieter um, so all it does basically instead of just having one shim inside the injector body which the um, pressure overcomes and allows the needle to lift there's actually two sets of springs now uh, firstly it overcomes a slightly weaker spring which is your pilot spring but then the needle is only allowed to lift literally a couple of thou and it then hits the main spring and then it has to overcome that spring to do your main injection so you get like a slight needle lift at a low pressure and a full needle lift which gives you your pilot and main injections um, but the issue is I when I build injectors because I don't have any fancy equipment or anything like that I've just got a normal um, mechanical pop tester now with dual stage injectors it's pretty much impossible to actually um, set your main injection because obviously you can set when the, the pre-injection pops off um, but that's pretty irrelevant really now from a tuning point of view the pre-injection is completely pointless um, it just makes the engine run quieter and it's it's just annoying so what I've actually been doing is disabling the, the dual stage side of the injector and converting them into single pop injectors which is now what I'm doing because we've got it running six, okay but all the different cylinders are doing different things and it's just not that happy it's sort of hazing on some some pots and clean on others just because the literally the main injection pressures are just completely awry but doing it like this 